I first saw a Lavi block diagram while working in a biomass combustion research lab at school. I looked at the block diagram and asked my senior research partner, how do you know what executes first? Does it go left to right or top to bottom? He explained it as a mix of science, magic, and love and told me to get back to work building the reactor chamber. Let's demystify, clarify, and understand data flow and execution order. Data in LabVIEW flows through nodes. Nodes are objects on the block diagram that have inputs and or outputs and perform operations when a VI runs. In order to determine execution order, LabVIEW follows two data flow rules. An object executes when all data at its input terminals is available, and an object outputs data from its output terminals when it has finished execution. For instance, this block diagram has two nodes, this add function and this multiply function. How can I determine which of these will execute first? Intuitively, you may say that it's the add function because it comes first or it's over to the left. But the real reason is that it meets the requirement for execution according to rule one that we just looked at. It has all the data available at both input terminals because both of these controls can immediately supply data to the terminals. Looking at the multiply function, we see the lower input can immediately receive its data from this constant, but the upper input is waiting from data from the output of the add function. And we know that the add function won't output its data until it has finished executing according to rule two. Thus, we have an inherent execution order. The add function must execute before the multiply function. And if we watch and highlight execution, we see that's precisely what happens. Now let's look at this block diagram. We have the chain of VIs we just examined, and then another like it. When I hit the run button, which of these functions will execute first? Obviously of the add and multiply function, we know that the add will execute first. And of the subtract and divide functions, the subtract will execute first. But which of the add or subtract functions will execute first? This is a bit more tricky, as there does not exist a data flow dependency between these two functions. In other words, they don't share inputs and outputs. In this case, LabVIEW will simply choose whichever it is more efficient for it to run first. This could be either, depending on a variety of factors. Now we don't want to give the impression that LabVIEW is erratic or unpredictable, because if we really wanted to dictate that one of these functions would go first, we can do that very easily. However, in this case, by programming the block diagram in this manner, we've essentially told LabVIEW that we don't care which of these will go first, and so LabVIEW just chooses one. There are several ways of dictating execution order, and we'll take a look at that next time. Now let's combine these chains of functions. The question is, will the multiply or the divide function execute first? Think about it. The answer is still, we don't know. No doubt some of you thought that the multiply function would definitely execute first. Let's explore that line of reasoning. The rationale often is, is that after the add function executes, LabVIEW now has two choices of which to execute, the multiply or the subtract. If subtract is chosen, then naturally LabVIEW will go back and execute the multiply function, right? No. Remember that after the subtract function executes, now there are two possible nodes that have all the necessary inputs in order to run, the divide function and the multiply function. So LabVIEW could execute either. So the answer is, again, we don't know. As I mentioned before, there are several ways of eliminating this question of which will go first. However, you don't need to impatiently wait for the next episode to find that out. Take a look at the text description of this video, or feel free to send us threatening and vulgar emails at labviewtraining at sixclear.com.